Today we're flying out the FU1A, the Japanese 2.7 Premium, and just like the F2G, albeit not very similar in performance, they both are used quite often for printing silver lines. But that's not what this first game is going to be about. The first game I will get 9 kills, the second I will get 7. And the point that I want to make today is that, well, a lot of people, and that's not just in water, not just in air, not just in tanks, it's everywhere, they will use the, the outcome of the match, so say 9 kills to show you why the plane is good, why the tank is good, why certain blah 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 is good. And the thing that I don't like about that is, and well, I will show you exactly that in this very game. The second one is a little bit more skill based, it's a little bit more showing of what the plane can and can't do. But this first one, well it's 9 kills so I have to uh, of course upload it. But that's not what this is about. It's about how good the plane is and how well it performs. And well, yes, the 9 kills are partially due to the plane. I could have done this in basically anything that has 50 kills and doesn't compress like a bitch. And why is this important? Well, really it is important because, well, I can make a video on a plane. I can do 50, 60 games, not get a single kill in any of them. And then upload the one where I get 8. Then tell you this plane is amazing, it's very consistent, because you don't see the fails, you don't see the parts where I don't get the 8 kills that I just showed you. And of course as a content creator you're always a little bit forced to do such a thing, but you can at least be transparent about it. A lot of people are not aware of what's going on on the screen. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you are kind of responsible for it. And here we go, kill number 3, I got an assist on someone that I crit. And or is the skill required for this? Right now it's still on basically zero. Maybe it's a little bit of aim. Very small amount. But any plane will work if you have decent aim and good guns. So again, it's not about the plane here. And don't get me wrong, the FU-1A is one of the best planes well, for its tier or any BR. So don't get me wrong on this one. I'm not trying to mock the plane. I'm just using it as an example. The FU-1A... I got pretty good results with it, it's an amazing plane, but what I want to show you today is that the kill count doesn't actually say anything about how good the plane is, because if all the kills that you're getting are like these, and again I'm going to be pouncing two guys that are busy shooting someone else, they're busy shooting ground units, and I can tell you, look at how many kills I'm getting, look how good the plane is. And it's the same with those planes like the Narv or the 190 A8, and all those kind of planes with an air spawn and a lot of guns. It's very easy to get good results with it in terms of RP, in terms of kills. Because, well, getting kills is, of course, good because you want to, well, uh, get RP. The thing is, however, how often are you going to get those kills and how good is the plane actually? Because those are two different things. The plane can be amazing for grinding, but the plane itself can still be absolute dog water. People very often make mistakes playing versus you, and if you have a semblance of knowledge from what you're doing... Most of the time you will simply win those fights, even if it's 1, 2, 3 kills and then the, the fluke match here and there, you'll get 5 to 6, maybe even 7. And then if you just keep playing until you get matches like that, especially people that only upload like once a month, not a lot of those. But what happens is you create this illusion of planes being good or you only getting high kill games and that's also why I've been including more 3, 4 kill clips. The Hornet video that I will release very soon here is also going to be 4 kills and most of those kills are actually decent. At least they show what the plane can do. And a 3 or 4 kill game can be much better to show you what a plane is capable of than showing you this game. And this video will be exactly about that. Because the second kill, second kill, second game will have 7 kills. But all the good kills are at the start or at the middle. And the, f the first and the last few I normally would have cut out. But I'm trying to make a point here so I will show you all of it. Another guy coming head on here. Have you spotted the kill yet while well, I'm actually doing something noteworthy? I haven't and we're already on kill number 7. There's two more bombers left. So I'm gonna kill a grand total of three bombers. Kill two guys that are ground pounding and attack someone else. Kill another two guys that are getting engaged by four teammates. F head on someone that's head oning someone else. Pitch up to someone that's already in a furball. And all of these kills are just absolutely brain dead. But again, I'm going to get a lot of silver lines out of it. I'm going to get a lot of RP out of it. And I'm going to get 9 whopping kills. And I can advertise that, which I did. 
just to make a point again. And that's kill number 8. Shoot two rounds in the head on head shoulders pilot. And that's going to be, well, the second last kill. And now we're just going to cruise around here just outside of his AA bubble. Waiting for him to come out. And I'm going to get it the ninth. Because, well, I simply want to, well, kind of collect those. I'm sorry for the F-35 flying over that was just in the background. I didn't actually realize until I was halfway through my recording. So I'm going to cut it and we are now back with it being gone. But yeah, I kind of collect those. I like to know down all my 7 pluses. So 7, 8, 9, 10. Possibly 11 and 12 if I ever get those, but probably won't. And there we go. Let's kill number 9. Is it maybe a little bit hypocritical? Hypocritical? I don't know. I don't speak English. To say... The kills don't really matter, and then at the same time, collect those games, know them all down. Well, kinda, not really. I mean, I don't use it to say that the plane is good, which is the exact point that I'm trying to make. It's always fine to, to be happy about a 9 kill game. I am too. But when you're trying to make a video, when you're trying to show people if the plane is good or not, you have to be a little bit more critical about it. And it's the same with people that don't make videos, but they just post the screenshots on Discord. And then it turns out they killed 5 AI planes and 2 players. And then they say, wow, I got 6 kills, this plane is amazing. I'm getting like 8 kills per game. No, you're not. And again, the first 2 kills of this game are going to be relatively boring. But now I want to show you on what this plane can do. And how you will work with an advantage, disadvantage. And that was just my screen freezing. That wasn't you. And now I'm in a little bit of a bad spot. Because I was getting a little bit overly aggressive. I'm trying to get some... Uh, I was just flying it as aggressively as I could, trying to get high kill games, because I was simply farming them at this point. And that's why I took out this thing. As I was trying to get the most boring gameplay possible, just for this video. But now, I'm actually having to do something. There's a Yak-1 coming for me. And while the FU-1A is pretty good, and it's amazingly fast, it's also amazingly boring to play that way. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to pick up some speed here, and I'm going to be trying to reverse this guy. Is that a good idea? Probably not. If he had played it right, I 100% would have died here. But if I played it right, I would have fallen asleep and left him in the dust by simply running away. But no one wants to watch that. No one wants to do that. At least I don't anymore. I'm simply waiting now for the typhoon to break off. So I'm picking up some speed to run away from the typhoon. So he gets bored. He flies away. And then I will try to start dogfighting the Yak-1B. Hoping that's going to work. Because I'm one of the last guys alive. So I'm going to be... A little bit of a threat in that way because then the Typhoon is likely to just stick on you because he doesn't have another target to go for. Luckily he finally breaks off. Yak-1 is still slowly catching me. I'm simply waiting now for the Typhoon to break off a little bit further. But I also don't want to wait too long because then the Yak-1 gets impatient. Quickly check what kind of level he is. Very low level. Which is perfect because now we can simply pretend like we know what we are doing. And I will show you just how easy it is. So we dive down under him. We're going to pick up some speed here to turn into him. He's going to compress if he goes for us. And if he breaks off, he is going to die. He's going to go up. We pitch up after him. We turn the web back on. We're going to be aiming at him here. He's trying to zoom away. But unfortunately for him, our fifth scales have insane range. And I have unlimited ammo. So all I have to do is just simply keep aiming at him. And he will eventually die. He's still... Well within gun range, we can shoot all the way out to like 1.2 at these velocities, or at these speeds. That's the same word actually. And now, he's climbing above us, but by simply flying straight for a little bit, we can close the gap. We can pitch back up again, and now he's stalling out. And this is going to be an insanely easy kill, because now we're catching him in this climb, and there he goes. Well, in reality, all that man had to do was simply turn. If he had turned at any point, instead of trying to fly straight, I would have died. <laughs> it's, it's really that simple. I can show you how to capitalize on someone's mistake, and that's of course an important part of the game. That's an important part of War Thunder. And the thing is, most people don't actually make those kind of mistakes. And if you then tell people to do that kind of maneuver... Because the thing that I did was that Yak-1B was simply give him the kill. But I knew that he's low level, and I knew I could probably get away with it, and I did. And I can then tell you that you should do those kind of things in the FU-1A, and then you try it yourself, 
you die, and then there's two outcomes. You either gonna call me a lying piece of shit, which a lot of you guys already like to do, or what you do is, oh man, you're so good, I can't make those maneuvers work. Because he showed you the one time it actually did work. And now, this is how you fly the effort you want to. You side climb, you try to get above someone, the other one baited someone down. They are both low, well, not really slow, but they're low on the deck. So I can just boom and zoom on them, they're not paying attention, they're very busy trying to shoot down my teammate. So I shoot a little bit, set him on fire, switch targets, because well, the other one is already on fire. He's likely going to put it out because it's an ITP and they really don't like burning up. ITP doesn't turn well in the sliders, so we can just stick on his six, set him on fire as well. And now we're going to be looking at the fireworks, seeing who's going to put it out and who isn't. I'm expecting both of them to put it out. The first one already did, and the second one did as well. But the first one at least lost his steel control. Set him on fire again, hoping he won't put it out. But it, looking at his trajectory, he's probably not going to be pulling out of it. And there we go. Those two kills were essentially the only thing, well with the setup included, on how you have to fly this thing. You want to get above someone, you want to pick up some speed, and you want to start boom and zooming someone. Here comes the Typhoon and an Isle 2. And the Typhoon might actually pose a threat, might actually become a nice little dogfight. Well, dogfight not really, because you don't want to turn fight with a Typhoon in this thing. Well, you don't want to turn fight with a Typhoon in almost anything. But again, what they are going to be doing is run back to the airfield. And they already gave me their 6, so I can just run them down. There we go, we're gonna go back to normal speed. I still have 700 rounds left. He is almost in, uh, in gun range, I'm just kind of tap firing at him. I will probably get some hits in, but I won't do a lot of damage. And it's simply just uh, a way of trying to make him to get him to turn. This IL-2 doesn't have a gunner, I'm trying to get a little bit closer. Notice that he doesn't have one, and then I can just stick on him, of course. So, shoot it for a few more rounds, that's 6 kills. Still nothing eh, well, important happened at all. And the last Typhoon is going to be trying to run back to his airfield, and he'll get very, very close. I want him to turn, I want him to maneuver, I want him to get scared. But he's so busy trying to go for the airfield that he's just flying straight. Managed to get a crit in. Now he starts maneuvering, which is actually a very bad idea, because after you get crit, you lose a lot more speed in your maneuvers. But he's so busy trying to fly straight that I blast his wing off, and it's going to be the second game where I get a lot of kills. And what did you learn from this? That I'm very good at picking my games. And of course I could have cut the part out where I got killed by AA just before I actually died of it, and then say that I didn't die and I won the game like that. Unfortunately, I ate the ground. We are still going to win because that was the last guy, but that's besides the point. Hope my point is clear, hope I didn't bore you to that. And I'll see you all pretty soon again with probably a jet video.